structure on the Thames which houses Scotland Yard is a warehouse of homicide for everyday objects. A glass ashtray, a porcelain face, an electric fan. All are touched by murder. Here's a piece of iron chain. It's a familiar object. Might be a bar on a gravel driveway. It might rest in an emergency truck. A use in towing an automobile. It might. In this case, it was the cause of death. Remember this, Bodvin? Hey, of course, Inspector. You knew, didn't you, we just about then closed the file on the Telk killing? Yes, you told me. It's just as well there's no statute of limitations on murder. <laughs> Today, that train can be seen in its place in the Black Museum. From the annals of the Criminal Investigation Department of the London Police, we bring you the dramatic stories of the crimes recorded by the objects in Scotland Yard's Gallery of Death, the Black Museum. Heart. This way. 
I still have to wait in the upstairs sitting room. Whatever you think best, miss. It's your ghost. Yes, isn't it? The stairs are this way. The sergeant felt rather than saw in the darkness that it was a large house. Seemed to be several rooms on the ground floor and upstairs. They passed three closed doors before they entered the sitting room, which apparently extended the full width of the building. That's the comfortable chair. It was father's. Thank you, miss. A drink? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, I'll smoke, if I may. Oh, yes, of course. When does he come? Midnight? Any time after I've gone to bed. Usually. Around now. Don't let me get you. 
you. Run! Run! Yes, run. Run, Joan, run. Menace in his arm. Run, Joan, out into the black hallway down the front stairs. Run! Nothing. 
Justice Marin Telt walking home alone on a July night toward 11, a dark street, a carving knife in his back. That's all. A night train to Norwich. Another police headquarters, another detective. Anxious to cooperate. Here it is, Inspector. All we have on the Hennessy case. Tell me about it, Wilson. Hit and run, driver. I checked the scene myself. Hennessy was hit on the sidewalk. Looked as if some drunk had driven right up on the walk and crushed the man against the building wall. And so a pattern emerges. Two men die, quite unexpectedly, but in this case, no clues, no indication that there was purpose or motive, except that a third man died quite naturally in London, and his daughter was the victim of the fight, and all those involved were related to each other. As a pattern emerges. Continued in Bristol. All right. Uh, what have you on the car table? I thought I believe she was uh, uh, retired. Quite the usual. I didn't see any of them. I should fly to twelve. I thought she was retired. I'm on a bit strict in the bottle. I know it's kind of mess. Nothing. Anything else? The prints on the bottle? No. Please put some wear on it. Put the bottle over the sink. Her landlady said she had a visitor the day before, but she was it. Foremost, do all that sort of thing. Mind if I go over that landlady? No, not at all. Her name is Ross. Help yourself. Quite a talker, that woman. Got away. It was a semi-detached villa with a vacancy sign on the door. Mrs. Ross was indeed quite a talker. Inspector Hall let her talk. Yeah, at least 15 years. A wonderful woman, Inspector, sir. So many of our students come to see her even after she retired. The kind of teacher you don't find nowadays. I know exactly what you mean, ma'am. And she was so happy that day. What with her cousin being here the day before and all. Her cousin, Mrs. Ross? Yes, I remember it clearly. She called... She was going out for a bit of cake for tea now that her cousin Michael Stroud had come to see her. A new name, another cousin. One Michael Stroud, carefully now, Inspector. Carefully. You don't happen to know where he was from now, do you, ma'am? Oh, from London. I have the address. Found an envelope in the waste paper basket while I was clearing out the poor thing's room. Did uh, you tell this to the police? No, sir. They were so busy with their bustle and dusting everything for fingerprint states. Yes, 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 of course. Uh, now, Mrs. Ross, uh, may I have that address, please? That is, uh, if you still have it. Her teletype message travels much faster than a train from Bristol to London. By the time the inspector reached his office, Sergeant Preston was waiting with the answer. We've been there, sir. Well, Michael Stroud had a flat at the address, but he's moved and left no forwarding address. Oh, uh, when did he move out? July 13th, sir. The day after the Carstairs woman died. When the quarry is escaping, what do you do? Well, at least you can do it. Close some of the gaps in the situation. Try to develop motive and opportunity. The inspector permitted Joan Tomlinson to leave the hospital and to proceed in his company to the office of a solicitor. Now, sit down, Joan. And to Inspector. Oh, thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. I, uh, I gather something is amiss. Mr. Thomas, we have reason to believe that three people have died because of Miss Tomlinson's inheritance and that her own life is in danger. Well, that's unbelievable, sir. It usually is. However, the three who are dead are all, uh, were, all second cousins of Miss Tomlinson. Her next of kin. What we are here to find out is, does the will under which she inherits her property state to whom that property devises in the event of her death? Mm, not exactly. Uh, that is, if she dies in test it, the property under the law would pass to her next of kin in equal shares, of course. Uh, Mr. Thomas, uh, with all her second cousins dead, a third cousin will be next in line? Correct? Oh, absolutely. Of course, I, I know of no such relative, sir. Unfortunately, sir, we do. His name is Michael Stroud. His whereabouts at present are unknown. Motive, present. Very definitely present. Opportunity, obvious. And seized at least three times in Manchester, Norwich, and Bristol. As to the next move, the inspector outlined a plan. But tell them, do you still believe in ghosts? No, no, no. Uh, would you be afraid to stay marked alone? I see. I'm due to see the death. Yes, it's a ghost. Absolutely. You will? We'll get... Well, they began me. Joan left the hospital, returned to her house. To the memories. To the now silent ducts. To the still chiming clock.
first night was uneventful. Others followed. Bit by bit, Joan slipped back into her normal everyday routine, a girl in her home with a servant during the day alone at night. The ghost, the three deaths in three cities, the inspector began to take on aspects of a dream. Reality was coming home after an evening in the city, going upstairs, listening to the little clock. Preparing for sleep, indulging in a little habit of talking to herself. There's nothing to worry about. Really nothing. He's gone away. Out of the country, maybe. Oh, forget Michael Stroud, Joni. Forget the whole thing. What's that? How are you, John? Feeling well and safe? Get out. Whoever you are. That won't work, Jenny. You know I'm your cousin, Michael. Come to call. But I... I never saw you before. In my life? I know, dear. And now that you have seen me, what else is there to live for? <laughs> you... You couldn't get away with it. Oh, yes, I could. I can. I will. You'll be a lovely suicide, dear. Carbon monoxide from the register, from the furnace. Or maybe, yes, maybe they'll call it accidental death. Inspector Holland signed you. Oh? He led away you. I doubt it. He wasn't around to seize me tonight, was he? And I'm very good at hiding. <laughs> More than ever time you to Cousin Larry or Cousin Jerry or Cousin... They will. They have. <laughs> They're a fingerprint. Ah, there now. That's their worry, not mine. Now sit down. <laughs> In that chair. I will sit down. I have it planned perfectly, John. You'll sit down. I'll tie you in that chair, shut the windows, the door, turn on the heat. You'll be gagged, too. I forgot to mention that. You'll die. No. I'll come back, put you on the bed. No. No, wait. You can't make me. I said sit down and shut up. Oh. Take him in charge, Sergeant. We have enough. We're still in the bed, Sergeant. Look out! Yes, sir! Oh. Thank you, sir. For getting his gun away, sir. Nicely handled, Sergeant. You all right, Mr. Donaldson? Yes, I... I think so. He is a very corporeal ghost. Isn't he, Inspector? Definitely. And I believe his corporeal fingerprints will match those in the handle of a very corporeal knife in Manchester, a steering wheel in Norwich, a bottle in Bristol, and a certain chain in the possession of Scotland Yard. The case was clear. The defense was helpless. The case was closed at traditional time one morning in the usual manner. And Michael Stroud at the hands of the Crown became forever 